We've got a treat for you today. We're going to do a very energetic style of drumming. This originates in Japan. Um, this is called Taiko drumming. So to start off with, if you want to, you can actually make your own practice Taiko drum out of an um, old tyre and some packing tape. And we'll send out a link to a video on how to do this along with this tutorial. You can also make some uh, drumsticks or bachi, as we call them, out of a uh, cut down broom handle and just uh, sanding down the edges a little bit just to take the edge off. But if you don't have anything like this, you can always use uh, a cushion on a seat and some wooden spoons to play along with. So, starting with the drumsticks or the bachi. Now, the best way to hold these is quite loose. We don't want to hold them too tight like you would with a hammer. So, trying to grip primarily with the thumb and the forefinger, the pointing finger, and have about two or three centimetres sticking out underneath your palm. So, we're gripping like this to start off with and then allowing the bottom three fingers just to lightly wrap around underneath. Now, we want to keep the grip nice and loose, so the top two fingers act like a pivot point or a point where we can rock backwards and forwards. Now, as we're doing this, this pushes out the bottom three fingers and allows you to create a gap in the palm of your hand. So, you're having a flicking or a snapping type of motion as we hit the drum. So again, this is quite a loose grip and not tight grip like this where we're trying to use lots of muscle in our arm to create the action. We want to try and use our wrist a bit more to create a flicking action. So we'll try this with both hands, okay? So if we put our arms out in front of us, and I'll start with my left arm, so you're starting with your right, okay? So we will bring back the elbow, so we're creating an L shape, allowing the stick to fall back, creating this gap in the palm of our hand, and from there, flick forward, a bit like the action that you would use to, or a line tail would use to crack a whip. Okay, so we can do it with the opposite arm as well. Okay, so if we have both arms out in front of us, and we'll start with our right first. Right and left, and right and left, and right and left, and right and left, and right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Left, right, 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 left. Okay, good. So again, keeping the grip nice and loose and the arms relaxed as you're doing this. So the next thing is the stance. We have a particular way of standing behind the drum, and this is very similar to a martial arts style stance. So if you put your practice drum, your tire and packing tape drum, on a chair or a small table in front of you, or if you're using a cushion, have that placed on a, a surface that's not too high in front of you, and we're going to step forward with our left foot and step back with our right. Now the important thing while we're doing this is to have quite a wide stance because if we're too in line with the drum that we're playing we can lose balance quite easily. So having quite a wide stance, bending the left knee and always keep that knee bent in line with your foot. The back leg is fairly straight, but we're trying not to lock it in, we don't want to lock the knee in, so keep it nice and relaxed. And it is an awkward way of standing this if you're not used to it, but uh, regular practice does uh, help, help you become quite accustomed to it. So our hips are facing forward to where our drum is going to be, and we're dropping that body weight into our legs, so we're actually lowering our body a little bit closer towards the skin of the drum. 
Now for the top half of the body, we're going to relax our shoulders. Okay, keep our shoulders nice and relaxed. Have a little bit of a gap underneath the armpits. So it's bringing the arms out a little bit and not having them clamped into your side like this. So arms out a little bit. So imagine you've got a little um, ball, like a ping pong ball or something, just underneath your armpits, pushing them out a little bit. And then having our elbows forward from our body. Again, we don't want them tucked into the side. So having the elbows forward from the body and the sticks or the bachi in a V shape over the centre of the drum. Now this uh, is a, a good indicator of your distance from the drum as well because you don't want to be too close to it. So this is a nice comfortable distance from the drum. You're not too close, so your elbows are tucked into the side because this makes it really hard to play the big beats that we're going to be playing because you're closing off the space between yourself and the drum. So make sure you step back a bit and your elbows are forward from the body so it gives you lots of room to move. So a rough distance as a guide is usually, well it depends on how long the uh, sticks are that you've got, but usually a stick's length away from your belly button to the edge of the drum. So you can use that as a, as a guide for your distance. But as long as you can outstretch your arms comfortably, not overstretch too much, and have the tips of the stick, or both sticks, over the centre of the drum, and that's a good distance. So now we've looked at how to hold the sticks nice and loose, and how to stand behind your drum. We're just going to go through quickly the uh, Japanese notation that we use for hitting the drum. Now I will use this throughout the session, but I'll also be using right and left to help you along and become more accustomed to that as well. So for a single right-handed beat, it is DO. For a single left-handed beat, it is ko even though it sounds exactly the same. If those beats are closer together, as in the gap between the beats is shorter, they become do for the right hand and ko for the left hand. So that would be do ko. A hit to the edge of the drum is ka. Or a right-left hit to the edge of the drum would be kara. A stick click is ki. And a resting beat, which is usually accompanied by some sort of pose, is su. So a resting beat is also a pause beat, so it can still be a uh, beat within the pattern, but you don't actually play it on the drum. So for instance, if we put these sounds together to create our pattern, and I, for example, give you don, ki, su, ko, don, that would look like this. Don, ki, su. Don, ki, su, ko, don. Or don karaka, don karaka, don karaka, ka su don kon would look like this. Don karaka, don karaka, don karaka, ka su don kon. So this is the verbal notation or kuchi showa, which we use to help us learn the beats and internalise them. So we can actually chant them through before we actually play them on the drum. So we can learn them a bit easier just by saying them. So we're going to start off with a single beat with the right hand, or a dom. And I'm going to give you a cue to play this each time. So it is ichi ni so re. And that's the Japanese for one, two, get ready, or one, two, here we go. Ichi ni is one, two in Japanese, and sore 
is here we go, we'll get ready. So the key will be Ichi ni sore. So as we're doing, as we're saying this, I want you to bring your arm in the air nice and straight. So it's keeping your arm straight out up in front of you as you sweep it up. Ichi ni sore. So as we get to the re part of the sore, we should reach the top and we're pointing our stick right up in the air. Ichi ni sore. So as we're doing this, we're keeping our arm pointing straight out. It's very uh, much like Harry Potter brand brandishing a wand. Ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. Okay, so we're going to do that, and as we get to the top, we're going to bring it down and hit the drum. Again, keeping the bachi or the stick nice and loose in the hand, and allow it to flick into the drum. Try not to use uh, your muscle power in your arm to bring your arm down. Just let gravity do its work. So we're going to allow the, the arm to drop under control. So again, we're bending the elbow, allowing the bachi to fall back, and then fall into the drum. So from here, elbow, allow it to fall back, and then flick. So to the side, the whole process will be Ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. So we'll try that together. And Ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. Okay, let's try it with the left hand. Ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. Okay, so we're going to move on to playing each of these beats in succession with a space in between each beat. So we're going to be moving one arm at a time. Okay, so as we did before, we're going to bring our arm up, hit the drum, then the left arm will come up and hit the drum. But we're only going to use the ichi ni sore for the very first beat. For the spaces in between the next beats, we're just going to use a su. So for instance, starting with the right hand, it'll be ichi ni sore don su kon. Ichi ni sore don su kon. So that's right and left. Right, space, left. So let's give that a go just for the two weeks. Ichi ni sore su. Ichi ni sore su. Ichi ni sore su. Ichi ni sore. two more beats in. So we're playing four beats in all. So for instance, it'll be Ichi ni sore, right, su, left, su, right, su, left, su. And don't forget we're moving one arm at a time. Try not to get into moving both arms at the same time. It's just one arm at a time. Right, up, left, up, right, up, left, up. With the hand that you've hit the drum with, just try and allow that to hover about uh, three or four centimetres just above the skin of the drum. Okay, are we ready? Ichi ni sore.
一二それ。So from this position here, which is where we finished off on the last part, we're going to play a right hand beat and bring the left arm up at the same time. So it's very much like the blades of scissors coming together. So from here, right arm up in the air, we're going to play a right hand beat, dong, and bring the left arm up in the air. Okay, so from this position. Ichi ni sore. Okay, and back again. Ichi ni sore. Back. Ichi ni sore. And back one last time. Ichi ni sore. Okay, from here we play left hand beats. So it's exactly the same, the left hand's coming down to play and the right hand is coming up at the same time. So the opposite hand that's coming up should be reaching its highest point as you hit the drum with the opposite hand. So we're going to start with our left arm up in the air this time. Ichi ni sore. And back. Ichi ni sore. And back. Ichi ni sore. And back one more time. Ichi ni sore. So now we're going to start joining them together. So we're going to start with a right arm up in the air and play right, left, right, left. Four beats. Right, left, right, left. And both arms are moving at the same time. Don, con, don, con. Don, con, don, con. And ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. Okay, so we're going to go for eight beats in total this time. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. At the eighth beat, we're finishing with our left hand, and we're going to try and keep our right hand that we're not hitting with down towards the drum rather than bringing it up here to finish. So, to show you again. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So it's just keeping that right hand down once you play your final left hand beat. Okay, let's give that a go. Ichi ni sore. And right arm up. 
1,2,3 それ1,2,3 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 それ Okay, so let's put those two different types of beats together. So we're starting with four beats of the spaced beats and then eight beats of the scissored beats. So I'll show you first. So we're starting with an ichi ni so re to bring our right arm up. Then we're playing one and two and three and four and from here, we're going to go straight into the eight scissor beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keeping that right hand down at the end. So I'll show you again. So it's ichi ni so re. Right and left and right and left and right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Okay, make sure you're getting those arms nice and high, okay? Try and avoid bringing, stretching too much and bringing your arm right up to your ear. Try and have your shoulder down a little bit and have that gap in between your arm and your ear as you bring your arms up. So, one more time. So it's ichi ni so re. Dong su, kong su, dong su, kong su. Don come, don come, don come, don come. Let's give it a go. Ichi ni so re. So if two different parts of the group are um, playing call and response, 
or if playing together but two slightly different patterns, it's always important to listen to this type of um, bass line pattern to help keep the whole group in time with each other. So it's just an, a nice, easy, spaced, even beats. So it's right, left, 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 right, left. Or in the Japanese notation, doko, 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 doko. So we're going to start with our right hand, and it is just right left sticking all the way through. So we're counting one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and. So we make sure we finish on the left hand. So I'm going to say each knee sorry this time, but we're not bringing our arm up in the air. This is just to cue you in. So ichi ni sore. Okay, so you can see while we're playing this one, we're keeping the sticks fairly low, we're not bringing them too high. So Keeping it nice and simple, nice and relaxed. Right, left, 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 right, left. Ichi ni sore. Ichi ni sore. without stopping. So I will go through the actions and say it first just to uh, remind you of the first two parts. So we're starting with our right hand and it's ichi ni so re don su kon su don su kon su don kon don kon don kon don kon doko 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 so at the end of the right left right left right left right left remember we're keeping our right hand down to the drum for that that makes it a lot easier to play the right left right left right left part on the end okay so one more time to go through Ichi ni so re right and left and right and left and right left 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 Here we go And Ichi ni so re Ichi ni sore. 
一、二、それ。
but you're each starting at a different position. So someone might be starting with the don su kan su after the ichi ni sore, and someone might be starting with the don kon don kon after the ichi ni sore. But whichever you're playing, you always keep the order the same. So if you're starting on the don su, you move on to the don kon don kon, then the doko 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 doko. If you're starting on the don kon don kon, you move into the doko 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 doko, and then the don su kon su. So you can have a little fun with that, have a little play around, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again in another lesson. Thank you very much.